welcome today to Praise Tabernacle Worship Center for our very own leaders, our, our bishop, our pastor, Craig E. Brown, our first lady, Elder Debbie A. Brown. We are so very glad that you have come to worship with us. Amen. Right where you are, feel free to join in in the praise and worship as we lift up these songs unto the Lord.
me 
wonderful selections you're all I need and draw me close how many of you want to be drawn near to the Lord on today amen we certainly thank God for our speaker on today we certainly count it as an honor and a privilege amen to be able to receive from the Lord through our very own pastor our Bishop Craig E Brown let's receive him on today Amen. Hallelujah. And Lord, because we trust in you today, because we draw close to you, we'll never let you go. You're all that we need, and we just thank you for that. We don't need to check with another committee. You don't need to check with a higher authority because you're God and you're God all by yourself. And we just bless you and we glorify you. And as we go into these few moments of studying your word, and as we endeavor to bring hope and uh, joy and deliverance to the countless millions. Oh God, let your word go out. Let it sink in and Go into the innermost beings of the heart. Let it grab hold and let it spring up in life everlasting. In victory, for we have the victory in you. For there's none like you. You are God all by yourself. Besides you, there is no other. And we just bless you. We glorify you. We exalt you. We extol you. We magnify you. We lift your name on high. As David said, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou has lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. For we have the victory. We proclaim it. We declare it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. God bless you on today. God be with you on this beautiful day and January. We thank God for his wonderful works, his goodness. As Psalm 107 says that, oh, that men would give thanks 
to the Lord for his goodness and for his wondrous acts towards the children of men. We give thanks to the Lord on today. We bless the Lord. We glorify him. And we just praise him for who he is in our life. Regardless of what is going on. Regardless of what appears to be upsetting. What, regardless of what appears to be a distractive or to appear to be a sound of failure or defeat. God is with us let's make it personal God is with me yes. repeat that in your spirit that God is with me is with and so me. we just thank God for he is with us he's, he's, he's personable to us and we just praise him for that if you go we certainly before we go to our scripture we want to again continue to uh, give you New Year's greetings on this day to Pray and trust that your year is going fine and to under and for you to understand that uh, there is, although we demark time by, you know, hours, days, weeks, months, years, there really is no time in God. God has timing, but he has no time. And so although we demark this time as a new year, there's a demarcation of 300 and 64 days or I guess 364 and a quarter days however scientific we want to be about it uh, there God has no God is not bound by time God is 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 doesn't have to look at and say oh it's it's not 2022 anymore it's now 2023 so I have to do I need to do this or do that he's not bound by time we are we have to know when things are but God does it because he's God He's the inventor, the creator, the master of time. And so the creator, the creation is not greater than the creator. Let's go to Isaiah 42. And uh, we're going to read a, a, a few verses here to just give us a little bit more perspective. We're going to start at the fifth verse, although our theme verse will be the eighth verse, which we're going to take our our text from but we're going to start at the fifth verse uh, to uh, kind of give perspective on where things are, are Isaiah 42 and we'll begin at the fifth verse thus saith says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it I the Lord have called you to righteousness and will hold your hand I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people as a light to the Gentiles to open blind eyes to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. And the eighth verse says, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory, I will not give, I will not share, I will not turn over, I will not bequeath, I will uh, not disinherit or for another to inherit, or I will not allow the other to take it over. I'm not going to give it up. And my praise to carved images? Oh no, it's not going to happen. So from these few words, the, these uh, texts, scripture, particularly the eighth verse, when less is greater, or when less is more, when less is greater. There's a saying that goes around, and my youngest daughter will 
uh, kind of remind me, you know, from the, things are not like they were way back in my generation and the generations before and the generations before that and speaking from a perhaps a technology state or a, uh, you know and as we live in a world of technology of great technology and it is they say that well less is more meaning not having so many things so many tools per se or so so much to garble or to clutter or to do things you know when it comes to website when it comes to design when it comes to a lot of things it less is more in other words less is preferred or we don't need all of that we don't need a lot of things to get the message over and so we come to understand that when it comes to God he doesn't need anybody he is God all by himself and there are certain things that he reserves only for himself and if we recall a couple of weeks ago I spoke on how Gideon and the children of Israel were in constant frustration as a result of the enemies the surrounding any enemies but particularly the Midianites who would uh, who were constantly raiding and uh, you know destroying the harvest that they had if they put it in caves they'd find it destroyed if they dug it up in the earth they'd find it destroyed if no matter what happened the Midianites would come and just destroy the things that the children of Israel were doing and that was for, for specific reasons because the children of Israel had fallen away from God so God had given them up even when he came to Gideon, uh, he found Gideon hiding his harvest, his grain, his, in the wine press and trying to hold on and trying to keep, just trying to survive, just trying to make it. And it was frustrating. And the Midianites would destroy the livestock and, and pillage the land and it would just, and then leave them and go. And so it was this time that brought Gideon particularly to, to so much frustration. And there are times where we can look at crowds or the resources or the lack thereof in determining if or how our battles or victories are one or will be one. Yes. We look at the crowd. We look at those that are behind us, those that are supposed to be for us. When there are protests or when there are other uh, things that people want you to know about, it's almost like, hey, there were thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions that were in the street. There were so many and there are people who know how to estimate crowds they are experts in ex estimating crowds and how many people may be in a particular area at a time and uh, they do that at inaugurations and they'll do that in parades and, and other things that are going on and when people protest and they'll say well it's estimated there were X number th there was you know an X number of personnel or people in the streets and the more people you have the more uh, that are there to protest or to support something or to declare something it it shows strength and it shows that you know there's going to be a victory one no matter what and we're going to stay here we're not going to move we're going to either keep protesting we're going to keep marching we're going to keep demonstrating we're going to keep doing whatever we need to do in a peaceful way hopefully to get our point across and we all hear the proclamation or the statement, the home field or the home crowd advantage. That is, there will be more fans in attendance or in the crowds rooting for the home team, whoever or whatever that home team is, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, whatever, you know, the Olympics, whatever's going on, there'll be more crowds that, that's rooting 
for the home team and home players. More screams and, and sounds of exaltations and uh, let's call it so-called praise when, when there's something in favor, when a score happens. Maybe when a man gets on base. Maybe when so many yards are run in favor of getting to the goal line. And maybe when the ball is advancing. or Maybe when a runner is, is going out front. Maybe when a swimmer is, is gaining or has brought some type of, type of separation. The crowds are starting to, to bolster. And conversely, there will be boos when the opposing team uh, does something. You know, boo. Or they may, there may even be silence. That is every time the home players score points. Whatever happens, there's going to be this, this, these screams of victory and, and jumping and shouting. In Judges 6, the 12th verse, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, that's Gideon, and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon probably said, I don't know how the Lord is with me when all this stuff is happening. I don't know how God can make that proclamation or say that when we're being literally just, you know, seemingly defeated. When no matter what we do, things are going wrong. The Lord is with you. And he didn't understand it. And in the 16th verse of that sixth chapter, God tells him, that surely I will be with you. Surely I'll be with you. He didn't uh, preface it and say, well, if certain things don't happen or the weather is good or, uh, you know, they don't bring too many people, I'll be with you. Or if you have a whole bunch of people with you, I'll be with you. He spoke to him personally, said, I will be with you. Not if they don't, if you only have certain type of weapons. You see, in this modern day, we, we kind of look at what a country or a group of people may be able to accomplish by their weaponry or their technology. The United States certainly is not slack when it comes to weapons. In fact, there's weapons that we are not even privileged of, uh, privy, privy of, that's the average of us. We don't know what the United States has. We don't know everything they can do. We don't know what type of flying mechanisms are out there. We, we can see certain things, we can understand certain things. We don't know all of the capabilities of, of certain uh, machines and apparatus. We don't know what tanks can do. We don't know everything missiles can do and what submarines can do. We just don't know it because it is kept in secret. It's it's not for the public or for the world to get a hold to. The, the technology, the blueprints, the plans are not made public. So we, we don't know, but we do know, we feel that this the United States of America has somewhat of an edge uh, in superiority when it comes to weapons and when it comes to fighting and when it comes to other things because of the use of satellites and because of the use of, of things that take place, we feel we have an edge on anyone uh, or anything. And we say that because we feel that we are a, where we once were perhaps a sleeping giant, that we're now, now a fighting foe and a formidable foe. And woe to any country that decides that it wants to try to test the resolve of what the United States can do. And that's how we base our, our ability to perhaps have victory. But a lot of times uh, when God, and many times, and when he's dealing with things and when he's giving us the victory in our life, he's not basing it on what, he ha uh, what we have that's going to give us the victory. Because God doesn't need anyone or anything to give us the victory because he is God all by himself. Yes. The way they would say in the old school, he's God all by himself. He doesn't need anybody else. And we've learned that in this last, in the past couple of weeks as we studied several pastors, passages of scripture from the book of Isaiah during our prayer and inspiration and fasting times a few days ago. We come to understand how God made uh, the proclamation of the things that he was doing. 
fact, we learn that from Isaiah 41 and the 10th verse, he told the children of Israel through the prophet Isaiah, fear not. Or in other words, there's nothing to fear. For I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed for I am your God. He said that. He said, I will strengthen you. I will, I will harden you to difficulties. In the 43rd chapter, the second verse, the same book. When you pass through the waters, I, this is God speaking, will be with you and through the rivers. They will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched. Nor will the flame kindle upon you. I will be with you. Not the crowds, not the financial resources, not the technology, not the weaponry, not your mother, not your father, not your best friend, not if you were in prison, not your cellmate, not your, uh, your teammate, not the big muckety mucks that are in your church, and not the lawyers, the doctors, and whoever else may be there, but I will be with you. Yes. Same book of Isaiah, the 44th chapter. He says, I am the first and the last. Besides me, there is no God. There's nobody else. If we could put into our minds, our spiritual minds, and God, you know, we look around when we want to see things. We, we try to see what the lay of the land is and we try to scope it out. And if God were to do that, so to speak, he would literally look around and, you know, say, okay, is there another God? He's not looking for another God because he knows there's no, there's no other God. But he, he's, he's making a point and he's demonstrating there is no other God beside me. In the 45th chapter, 22nd verse, for I am God and there is no other. He makes that bold proclamation and he declares it. When champions feel uh, they are the greatest, the great boxer, Muhammad Ali would proclaim, he says, I am the greatest. Yeah. There's nobody else in his, in his heyday and certain things he would say, I am the greatest. He called himself pretty and Float like a butterfly, sting like the bee. He would make that proclamation because at that time he was the greatest and probably he goes down in history as the greatest of all times when it comes to a boxer. So Gideon has a situation. The Lord has told him that I will be with you. And even though Isaiah hadn't been written at that time for Gideon to perhaps study or look back on and, uh, and, and for him to get encouragement, the Lord went, appears to him personally. In the seventh chapter, he appears to him at the first verse, early in the morning, Jerubel, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Harod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moresh. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands or Israel would boast against me by saying, my own strength has saved me. A lot of times we forget that it's God that does the great things in our lives. And we always put the, believe it in English would be known as the first pearl person, I or me, I did this. Sometimes parents have a tendency to say to their children, I provided for you. I gave you a place to stay. I paid for your education. I taught you how to drive. I, 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 I cooked for you. I gave birth to you. I took care of you when you were sick. 
perhaps in the place of employment, maybe a superior, a manager or a boss might say, you know, I'm giving you an opportunity. I gave you, uh, I hired you so that you could provide for your family. I remember a lady once said to me when I was very, very young, I was about 20 years old, 21 years old, and I was working and she was in the sales department and I was in the support department. I worked in inventory control. And at the last moment, she brought in all of these orders, these just pages of orders that we, you know, back then they didn't have the technology, yeah, iPads and any of that stuff. They didn't have workflows and triggers. And she brought in all, she wrote down all this stuff. We knew every salesperson by their handwriting, so we knew who the person was. And so she wrote down everything and she made a statement that we need to get behind her and support her and we got to do everything. And she looked at looked at me I, I said well you know perhaps I, I don't know what I actually said I was just trying to say in a nice way that maybe if you do X or you do Y this will help us to do whatever and she turned and looked at me and <laughs> she was blinking her eyes kind of fast and she just said honey let me tell you I think she was from New York honey let me tell you something if I don't sell you don't eat and I you know, just kind of, I was 21, so I was trying to respect her. You know, she was probably old enough to be my mother, so I, I didn't want to say anything that would be offensive as a young person. And I just politely said, I called her name, I said, if you never sell a day in your life, I said, I will always eat. And I just kind of, you know, backed off and walked away. And she probably didn't mean any other thing and you know she was just trying to sell say I do my job you do your job and we all do whatever we do but I took it as if she was saying I uh, I determine if you keep your salary I determine if you work week after week week after week after week but when she said if I don't sell you don't eat it just ra it, something just raised up inside of me and some people will place that upon you that if I don't do certain things then certain things won't uh, happen for you in your lives but we always have to remember because the devil will always say and bring things to us and we have to be bold enough to say that you know God is my helper God is my strength and whether anything happens you know though the the, the mountains may shake and though the earth may dissolve into the mountains dissolve in the sea God is my refuge and my strength a very present help in trouble yes. and God came to Gideon and he told him in the seventh verse he said with 300 men who have lapped I will deliver you and give the Midianites into your hand let all the others return every man to his home. And I'm sure that must have puzzled Gideon for a quick second because he said, what are you talking about, Lord? I, we, we, we ready to roll. We ready to do what we have to do. We have uh, what we need. We have who we need to take down the Midianites. But less is greater. And when you proclaim to the world and to the devil himself, you can boldly say like, the popular song that was just sung earlier today you're all I need he's all I need God is all we need some of the words say, every breath you breathe through me let your rivers flow through me and I remember back in the 70s there was an early 70s late 60s early 70s there was an old school song that says you're all I need to get by you know, I don't worry, I don't fret because the Lord has never left me yet. Yes. You know, in our tradition, they would come back when I was down to my last dime. The God I serve stepped right in on time. I'm not worried, you know, about the other things because I'm standing on a sure foundation. Lord, you're all I need. Though we, we want to be comforted when others are around us and when we have everything we want to know that God is you that we depend on. 
because you're God all by yourself. Yes. Less is greater. And we only need God. We don't need anybody else. Gideon started out with over 30,000 men. The seventh chapter of Judges at the second verse, the Lord said to Gideon, the people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hand. Why? As I said earlier, they're going to boast about themselves and against me, saying that we did this. We got the victory. Mm. You know, it's just like fans today. Fans of a, in a city who support a particular team. When that team wins the pinnacle of whatever that is, sport they're in, the fans act like they did it themselves. Although the fans were not the ones on the playing field. Although the, though the fans are not the one going through weeks and weeks of training and discipline. Although the fans are not the ones that are eating a certain way. Although the fans are not making the sacrifices. Although the fans are not, you know, on the court uh, making those fantastic shots. Although it's not the fans, it's that player that's doing it. It's the fans that almost take as much credit for what the players have done. The fans will get out of hand and sometimes they'll get, they'll become, they'll, it'll be a celebration that it'll turn into a almost riot. They'll just, they'll just do things because they feel we won. Yes. Yeah. It's a song that was written for, by uh, Randy Newman, a popular songster. And he has a lot of things about Los Angeles in it. And so uh, one of the words is, I love LA. Yeah. So they, when Los Angeles, regardless of what sports team, sports franchise wins, they play that. And the fans just love it because it's almost as if they are the ones that attain the victory. They bank the boast. They go on Facebook and they go on, fans go on Twitter. They go everywhere and say, look what we did. But, and they were the ones sitting on the couch, hollering and out of shape and doing everything. But God said, these folks in Israel will boast and say, my hand has delivered me and not God himself. So he says in the third verse, so now proclaim in the ears of the men saying, whoever is fearful and fearful and trembling, let him turn back and depart from Mount Gilead. And it was about 22,000 men of Israel returned, but 10,000 remained. So that lets us know there were approximately 32,000 that came out. Then the Lord took Gideon through a series of tests and qualifications regarding the remaining of those who should go and who should stay. He finally got to the point down at the seventh verse and he said, with the 300 men who lap, I will deliver you and give the Midianites into your hand. But all the others return every man to him, to his home. And there are times when God challenges leaders. There are times when God challenges those around us and when it comes to dependence on him. God challenges and says, you don't need this or you don't need that. You don't need to depend on what the branch manager is going to say. You don't need to depend on what the real estate mogul is going to say. You don't need to depend on what the developer is going to say. You don't need to depend on that. Just depend on me. Yes. I'm God and I'll make it happen. Put your trust in me. And so he challenges us many times and he may even cause things to be at a standstill or in a place of question because he wants us to know it's about us. It's about me as God and not about you and anything you've done. It's not about your education. So what you have a master's degree, so much you have, so what you got a PhD, so much you're a, a fellow, so much you're a, a, a world renowned writer or author. It's not about you, but it's about me. Yeah. Therefore, we cannot be afraid. Although we cannot understand or we cannot see what is going on, our reliance must be on God and God alone. As I conclude, no matter what the political climate is, the social surroundings are, the financial forecast, 
One day it's a it's inflation. The next day it is a recession. The next day it is growth. The next day interest rates are down. The next day supply chain is great. The next day there's nothing left. Whether it's a health crisis, the COVID numbers are up. Influenza is up. Influenza is up. Everything's up. The hospital beds are full. No matter what's going on in our life, just know that less is greater. And when you have God, you don't need anybody else. Yes. God is with you. He is God all by himself. Yes. If it's in the courtroom, God is with you. Yes. If it's in the operating room, God is with you. I, As many of you have, I experienced a, uh, an operation or surgery not too long ago. And although the, there were so many teams, there was the, uh, when I went to be admitted into the uh, pre-op, I guess, area, there was an admitting nurse. And then there was somebody else that came. And then somebody else did something else. Then, then eventually came the uh, anesthesiologist. Not one, not two, but three. Three different ones. And all this preparation for me. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, what a staff of people to try to take care of you. Then the operating room nurse was coming. Then came the doctor to, to you know, tell me what he was going to do and to review everything. Then another group wheeled me into the operating room. Then there was another group of people there. There was another anesthesiologist. He says, well, I'm the anesthesiologist that's going to be with you through this surgery. And, and this is my assistant. And I said, well, it takes five anesthesiologists to go through all this stuff. But I'm the one that's, you know, then he said, well, I'm the doctor that's going to do this and do that. Then there were a group of nurses, then another group of special people and all of this stuff. Then after I came out of surgery, I don't even know when it happened or how it happened. It just You just wake up and you're in the recovery room. And then there's another group of people there. And, you know, naturally you feel, okay, there were so many people to attend to me. Uh, but in my mind and in my heart, I knew it was God and God alone yes. who brought me through. And I don't care how many people are in the emergency room. I don't care how many people are in the operating room. It's God that brings you through yeah. I don't care how many lawyers you have when you go to court it's God that's with you in the courtroom I don't care how many people stand up against you and who you may have it's God and God all by himself he doesn't need anybody else because he says for I am God there is no other so be encouraged as you continue on through 2023 it may look a little rocky it may look a little unknown but know that God is with you and there's none other beside him. Less is greater. Less is more. When you go through the waters, he's going to be with you. When you go through the flames, the fire, he's going to be with you. Don't worry about and don't look around. And just as he was with Gideon, he's going to deliver the enemy into your hands. Yes. Pastor, be encouraged as you embark on the things that God has for you. You may not have all the finances you need, but God is going to open the door. Uh, evangelist, be encouraged as you preach the word of God in different places. Missionary, be encouraged as you may even go to foreign countries where they may not even believe in God and where there's witchcraft and so, much, so many other things going on. God is with you. Woman of God, Stand courageously when others may not want to hear you because you're a female. Know that God is with you. Yes. Young person, no matter what's going on in your educational pursuits as you pursue to do better for the uplifting and the upbuilding of the kingdom of God, know that God is with you. It's he that's with you. He doesn't need anybody else to help him. He may use others on his behalf, but he doesn't need anybody else. Yes. So be encouraged, leader. Be encouraged, uh, great one. Be encouraged when you're doing the work of God. God is with you. Less is greater. And he's with you. He's never gonna, he's never gonna leave you, nor is he gonna forsake you. Father, we thank you right now. We bless your name. I bless your name. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for everything. And 
Lord, as we embark upon this new year, this new time and era in our life, things that we thought would be uh, more uh, developed for us by the end of 2022, maybe not there yet. Things that were looking to happen last week, this week, next week. It looks a little scary. But Lord, we depend on you. It's you that we look to. Yes. So Father, just as Gideon took up the task, as you said to him, surely I will be with you. Lord, be with us. As you told the children of Israel through the prophet Isaiah to Let's not fear, for you are with us. We don't have to look around in terror. We don't have to be dismayed, for you are our God. And we depend on you. We thank you. We glorify you. We lift you up. Lord, lift up the hung down head. We pray for this nation as it goes through all the different protocols and whatever is going on. We pray, O oh God, and we look to you and we proclaim the victory right now. And even if our mother and our father forsake us, Lord, you're going to bear us up because you're with us. Though we may go through the shadow of the valley of, the, uh, valley of death, you're going to be with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. And we have faith in you and we rest in you. And we just praise your name. We glorify your name. And we thank you. It's done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Support the ministry of Praise Tabernacle. You can do so by mailing your contributions to 4859 West Lawson Avenue, number 413, Los Angeles, California, 90056. Uh, you can do so by going on to Zale and going to info at praisetabwc.org. You could also text give 323-366-3628. Uh, you can go to our website, praisetabwc.org. Or if you choose to do cash app, dollar sign praisetabwc. We look forward to the many great things that God has for us. We know that uh, very soon we're looking to be into our new sanctuary, our new complex. We're depending on God. Yes. We, we're not depending on what all the other statistics are, although that we, we need to be diligent in what we're doing. We're believing that God is opening up a door for us as he is for you in many ways. Be encouraged in whatever it is that God has you, whatever he's given you. Be encouraged and know. And just remember in just a couple of weeks our time for this particular broadcast this particular streaming will move up 30 minutes where you're watching this now perhaps at 10 30 a.m pacific time it will now be 10 a.m pacific time we are replacing some of our technology and our tools and replacing other online streamings that begin at 10 and now this particular streaming uh, capability or services uh, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever the streams are will begin at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So we look forward for that taking place and look forward to seeing you at beginning February 5th, 2023. And we just praise God for you. Be encouraged. Know that God is with you. He's not going to let you down. He's going to see you through. Less is greater because God is all by himself. And he's going to take you through. God bless you. We love you. You can drop us an email at info at praisetabwc.org. And we will uh, correspond with you. If there's any special needs you have, uh, you looking for God to do or anything that you're looking for. We praise God for you. Join us uh, in our Bible studies at 7 p.m. on Wednesday over Zoom. You can get all that information on our website as well. God bless you. Go with God. Be encouraged. God is with you. Surely 
I will be with you. This is what God says. And he's going to be with you. Amen and amen.